Due to an obvious lack of common sense, you have stepped off the edge, lost your magnetic grip of the ship, and drifted to your death. a lot of nerve coming in here with your EVA suit on. That's the last straw. Turn in your mop. You're fired. Well, Roger, you certainly didn't get off to a very good start. Better luck next shift. to the bottom of the concealed pit. You might have survived the fall had you not come into contact with the several 30 centimeter long spikes planted vertically along the bottom of the pit. but for its green fur and orange spots. Mm -hmm. Holy jeez, boy! That mushroom thing sucked you clean up! You can't move a muscle nor see a speck of light. You begin feeling waves of tingling warmth and moisture. Suddenly, it's not so bad in here. Wow, check out the colors, dude. Your body and mind enjoyed the short-lived buzz that is a side effect of the lethal poison you now marinate in. You are oblivious to the end. Not a bad way to go, actually. But it sure is early in the game. I had high hopes for you. They said, who? Roger Wilco? Not a chance. That chump won't last 20 minutes. I said, no way. Roger isn't that lame. So anyway, don't make me look stupid, too. Startled Bunny has fallen into the formerly concealed pit. Ah! You fall down the large and obvious pit in the ground. You might have survived the fall had you not come into contact with the several 30 centimeter long spikes planted vertically along the bottom of the pit. uncool. It looks like you've adhered yourself to this tree like a fly to flypaper. And speaking of insects, here comes a swarm now. You'll be proud to know that you have filled today's nutritional requirements for many of the local carnivorous insects. Adventuring is not always pretty. Like the hovercraft you wrecked it. Rats! Bohal's troops have tracked you down and passed sentence for your escape. Tough luck, eh?
Good. You've succeeded in establishing contact with one of this planet's life forms. And it looks like you'll get to examine it up close and personal. The giant root-looking thing is giving you a guided tour of its digestive system. What you experience next is too horrible to describe. Let's just say that you die as a result. You are dead. Trust me. It may please you to know that during the night you didn't digest well. For a while, gastric distress made it extremely unpopular with the other root monsters. If only it didn't look like a maze, you'd probably be able to think a bit more outside the box. succeeded in establishing contact with one of this planet's life forms. That was unexpected. The thing exploded, taking you on a one-way trip to that great garden in the sky. If only it didn't look like a maze, you'd probably be able to think a bit more outside the box. The swamp monster attacks you with its slimy tentacles. You struggle in vain to free yourself. You're dead. Better luck next time, Roger. You can't go on. You do not have enough oxygen in your lungs. You panic. The need for oxygen causes you to become irrational. Your desire for air causes you to inhale large quantities of water, which results in suffocation. You smoothly step off anything that will support your weight. Gravity has its way with you, and you are sucked to the depths of the fissure at a very high rate of speed. Needless to say, you hit the bottom, and your mortal remains are redimensioned to the point where life is no longer an option. Will you never learn? You can have this, if you just let me live. Astoundingly, he somehow seems uninterested in- Spock would safe. <laughs> Upon impact with the ground, the spore opens and spews its dust into the air. The hunter falls to the ground, paralyzed. You can't reach it, the hunter is... 
no amount of clicking is going The hunter stands and takes a long look in your direction. His face, though strange in its own right, bears an... You'll have to get his permission first. You blow the whistle in hopes of enraging your captor into a homicidal... The hunter stands his face. Don't get caught as Spock. You'll have to get his. The hunter has decided that it's a perfect day for a barbecue. As he slowly turns you over the fire, you begin to turn a beautiful golden brown. Death follows at an agonizingly long distance. The hunter has decided that it's a perfect day for a barbecue. As he slowly turns you over the fire, you begin to turn a beautiful golden brown. Death follows at an agonizingly long distance. Gravity sucks. So a man at the it wait. Shut up. Drats, Bohal's troops have tracked you down and passed sentence for your escape. Tough luck, eh? You tie the rope to the stump and unroll it down into the chasm. You head over the edge and down the rope. It looks like that stump wasn't a good thing to tie onto. You release your grip on the rope. This has a negative effect on your resistance to the urging of gravity. is lost, you gave the guy one chance too many and he seized the opportunity, not to mention you. You are consumed in two quick bites. It's so hard to treat you seriously when you walk off a perfectly obvious ledge like that. Come on, there's plenty more imaginative death scenes later in the game.
you hear the sound of many small, scratchy footsteps moving towards you. Ow! Mash! Growl! Crunch! Snap! You have just been felled by a killer cave beaver. You now know the meaning of excruciating when used in reference to level of pain. That was a rather spectacular entrance. All systems seem to be intact, though. He doesn't respond. He doesn't re- Got it. These guys seem to dislike you intensely. Using slings and very hard and sharp rocks, they have reduced you to a battered corpse. that the little pink dudes weren't kidding around. It's very dark and cramped in here. You can't see. Try something else. in here. Unfortunately, there's no way back up, Roger. You're doomed to spend the rest of your life here in the dark. At least you're not alone. You grow quite weary of swimming against the currents. You can no longer continue swimming due to exhaustion. You slip beneath the surface. Flat. After rolling off a pair of rock outcroppings, you find the final resting place at the base of the falls. You give the whistle a toot. It makes an odd sound. You hear an incredible whirring and grinding sound coming from the north. Suddenly, a labium terror beast buzzes into the room like a tornado. He looks like he could do as much damage. Well, ain't that a hoot. The guy reduced you to a multicolored mound of coleslaw-like matter. Better than a merfo lysomatic. You are dead, however.
you call out a universal expletive. The being fires in the general direction of the sound. Unfortunately, that happens to be where you are. You know the rest. You throw the rock in the direction of the guard. Unfortunately, it falls well short of its target. The guard responds by firing in the direction he thought it came from. Doesn't that bite? The guard caught a glimpse when you chucked the rock, and with impressive accuracy, wasted you. Dang. Allowing the guard to observe you was not very swift. He has disassembled you, probably adding a little excitement to his otherwise dull day. With all the strength you possess, you toss the rock. It lands somewhere under the platform and creates a skittering noise as it comes to a halt. The rock seems to have caught the guard's attention. Dang. Allowing the guard to observe you was not very swift. He has disassembled you, probably adding a little excitement to his otherwise dull day. Strolling south, you run into the guard from the tower. He doesn't seem to appreciate your comments regarding today's weather. Bang! It was pretty dumb to follow a non-friend bearing a lethal weapon. As you should have expected, he still desired you non-functional. Keep trying, Roger Wilco. You head back down to the lower level. Unfortunately, you are met by an armed guard. You have been quite a headache. To make it up to them, you are strung between two hovercraft. On the command go, life leaves you in two different directions. After surviving to this point, you are still prone to acts typical of the mentally absent. The shuttle begins to vibrate as the ascent because you are terminally weak above your shoulders, you guide the ship into the ground. It's a short step to the end of the game for you. You're nobody Epson. How could he see that as a weapon, you ponder to yourself, as the life drains from your body? That 
looks like a weapon. How could he see that as a weapon, you ponder to yourself, as the life drains from your body? It looks like you have been formally introduced to the floor waxer. You now consist of a very thin yet glossy floor covering. Too bad, you seemed to be making relatively good progress. alarmingly lightheaded. Apparently, you were a prime focal point for some aggression channeling by one of the caged creatures. Your headless composition indicates that your attacker possesses considerable strength, a good guy to avoid in the future. Of course, you are damaged beyond repair, and the game must end. You've made quite a bit of progress though, don't start screwing up now. dark and spiny beast with massive red lips grabs you up and after a longing glance proceeds don't read further if the phrase french kiss bothers you to plant a very moist french kiss on you you are left quite stunned You're a mother. Another barrier stands in your way. You feel the floor shift below you. It's moving to the left. If you want to see what it's like, jump in! Imagine, if you will, taking a bath in sulfuric acid and using pumice for a washcloth. After that bit of displeasure passes, it gets much worse, as the acid slowly eats its way to the last critical organs. Finally, merciful death takes you. Using formally uncharacteristic creativity, you apply the suction cup-like plunger to the smooth metal finish and hang on for dear life. Once a janitor, always a janitor. You can hang on no longer. Your grip weakens. 
Imagine, if you will, taking a bath in sulfuric acid and using pumice for a washcloth. After that bit of displeasure passes, it gets much worse, as the acid slowly eats its way to the last critical organs. Finally, merciful death takes you. have made the mistake of getting within what looks to be a cattle prod's length of the metal menace. A flame-throwing weapon connected to an extension arm reaches from its body and makes contact with you. That's when you begin feeling the intense burst of heat pulsing through your body. As you can see, you amount to little more than a hill of laser-fried beans. You've come a long way only to be torched. Keep up the fine work. A serious lack of oxygen causes you to black out and eventually die. Too bad Bohal didn't see fit to punch some air holes for you. That's all for now, Roger Wilco. You now know for a fact that less weight does not equal less pain at the onset of deceleration trauma. You've come so far only to die in a dumb way. What a geek. Darn it, Roger. I guess his lardness got a little fed up with your meddling. You've been redesigned once again, revealing a permanent overhead view. You resemble one of those wonderfully colorful mosaics commonly found on windshields. Darn it, Roger. I guess his lardness got a little fed up with your meddling. You've been redesigned once again, revealing a permanent overhead view. You resemble one of those wonderfully colorful mosaics commonly found on windshields. Type the action you would like to perform By already being in a miniaturized form, and setting the beam to reduce, you are now too small to exist. That wasn't too swift on your part. Too bad. A section of the glass tubing has fractured from combined stress. The pressurized atmosphere rushes for the relative vacuum of space. Due to the effect of the air rushing by you to get out the hole, the air in your lungs is sucked out and you find it impossible to get more. You weren't really that close to the end of the game anyway. No big loss. This 
ain't gonna be pretty. As the beam of light from the droid guard hits you, you begin to feel a rather curious sensation. Unfortunately, you don't have the time to figure out what the sensation is before you die. face closer to the button and lubricate it with your saliva. Hmm, that didn't work. Perhaps you should have searched the bathroom more thoroughly. Self-destruct will commence in exactly one minute. This is your last chance to push the self-destruct cancellation button. Cancellation button? Oh, now she tells me. What about seven? Just kidding. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Self-destruct commencing. Goodbye, world. More bad news, Roger Wilco. The asteroid's orbit has finally decayed to the point where contact with the molecular contents of Labion's upper atmosphere has been achieved. The result of this friction is a tremendous heat buildup. Despite being a very dense chunk of matter, the asteroid flames out, broiling you with it. Another victim in the heartless universe of adventure. Hit the big red button marked Escape. Warning, Warning. Emergency, emergency escape, escape vehicle, vehicle launch, launch sequence has, has begun. begun. You're going to have to stop cutting these escapes so close, Roger. Well, you must feel pretty good right now. You've stopped Vohal from carrying out his threat of salesman infestation, ultimately destroying the twisted scientist himself. You also managed to save your own skin. And just look at that score. Pretty darned impressive. Unfortunately, you failed to stop the launch of the clones dooming Xenon to the most horrible of fates. Way to go, Roger. Sorry, you've run out of oxygen and are now dead. Your death is a lonely event occurring in an utterly desolate setting. Alone in the knowledge that you have spared Xenon an incredibly horrible fate, you must now deal with the downside of self-sacrifice. So long, Roger Wilco, and thanks again for saving your people.
where am I?